Good afternoon. Welcome back to Passionate Oral Talk Radio Network. To educate, to enlighten, to entertain. And on this episode of Scam Damnation with your hosts, Lillian Caldwell, I am going to give you an idea of what happened on my first romantic scam, not realizing what it is. Because when I was being brought up during the 50s and the 60s, And even when I was bringing up my own child, it never occurred to me that people would pretend to be something they were not. Fraud was very much a black and white thing. And you knew immediately whether or not that's what was happening to you. But for me, who was new to social media and some of the social media foundations, it never occurred to me that a person would try to make a come on to me, and then once building up some sort of relationship with me, then scam me out of money. And he certainly did. And I was lucky. I could have lost a lot more than I did. And I very foolishly provided this man with my banking information. And I kept on telling myself that he wouldn't do that to me. And then he got into some kind of situation and he tried stealing from me by going directly into my bank account. So be very careful, ladies and gentlemen, because there are predators out there. And if you listen to some of the men, they will tell you that the women are just as bad and just as unethical as everybody else, because everybody wants their part of the American dream but they don't want to have to work for it or build up a sweat. This gentleman approached me from LinkedIn and I had several other people, men who also approached me for LinkedIn. I had recently lost my husband and I was still grieving. And he was from France, which delighted me no end. And when a man comes on strong and tells you how wonderful you are and how pretty you are, even though your reasonable mind is saying, no, 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 that's not true. When you have a man compliment you like that and you haven't heard it, well, you don't always think things through and you like being complimented like that. So you don't really see the connection between one and the other. Although now I sleep with Franklin's words, there's many a slip between cup and lips, meaning you have to be very, very careful. And that's what he did, folks. He approached me through LinkedIn. He was very courteous. He was, his English was not there. So what did we do? Well, I got an app that translated French to English on my cell phone, and he would call me up. Another red flag, never ever give them personal information about yourself, not your credit cards, not your banking information, not your phone number, not your email. And, and I'll be doing a section on this next week, if they ask you to join them on WhatsApp or Telegram or some of the other types of speaking places where you can go That's the first thing they do is try to remove you from the crowded neighborhood because they don't want anybody to hear you or them. And they'll tell you a thousand and one excuses. The other part of a romantic scam, a lot of them will claim they're on some kind of mission from the United Nations that's placed them in hostile countries like Iraq or Iran or Afghanistan And they're a soldier or they're a doctor and they're doing this stint for humanity. Don't fall for it. Most of them will text you or write you. But then you have to be very careful and make sure that you don't let them play with your emotions. All right. So he was French. He spoke to me on the phone in French. And my little translator translated it. And at first it seemed pretty harmless, but then he started having financial difficulty. And as a result, 
he needed some money. And silly me or stupid me, I am on a fixed income like most seniors. My husband and I worked our all life to put our money paid into Social Security. So money doesn't come in. It just goes out. And when you start having to give money to strangers who you don't know, then that means you have less money. But I didn't think about that. It's like getting chocolate and flowers every single day. And as a result, he really screwed around with my emotions. So don't fall for it. As soon as they say, I want money, cut off your conversation because you don't have money to give. Did you read or hear about the recent article from Fox News from out of Texas where there was a lady, an older lady in her 80s, early 90s, that was putting $40,000 through a crypto machine? And if it wasn't for a kind person who decided that there was no reason for her to be feeding a crypto machine $40,000 and called in the police, that lady would have been out of her life savings. Or there is another story on the internet about a gentleman who lost everything, so he committed suicide. You don't want to commit suicide. It takes too much to get through your early part of your life to take it at not even the end yet because somebody scammed you out of all your money. Speaking of scamming, do you know that there are charity scams out there? I bet you didn't even think about it. But let me remind you folks, if there's a way for money to be involved, the scammers from overseas or even here in the States will find a way to part you from your money. There are many organizations that do work for the poor and for worthy causes, and they deserve your support. But there are people who view this generosity on your part as an opportunity to steal money and line their own pockets. Charity scams occur all the time, especially common after a major disaster or tragedy, such as the Boston Marathon, terrorist attacks, or Hurricane Sandy, when the public is eager to give, or tornadoes ripping through Tornado Alley. Fake charities often use names similar to those of the well-known charities. Victims may be contacted by email, and really McCoy, which means true, honest organizations, only do that with existing shareholders. So if you get an email from a charity asking for money, delete it. Don't even bother clicking on it. By phone or by a volunteer going from door to door. Charity scams can also be vehicles for identity theft by directing victims to bogus websites where they provide personal information along with their donation. Again, if you have to provide personal information about yourself, hang up the phone, delete the email, delete the text. You do not want to get involved. They are not the real McCoy. So how do you protect yourself? Ignore email solicitations from unknown organizations. Bottom dollar, red flag. Yes, we're a scam and we're putting our hands in your pocket. Check with the IRS to make sure the organization asking you for money is registered as a 501c corporations, which means that anything you give them is tax deductible. Never give cash. When writing a check, make it payable to the organization, not to an individual or cash. If a charity claims to be helping a local organization, such as the police or fire department, check with the organization to see if they are indeed fundraising and using that particular charity. I get a lot of phone calls. I bet you too for uh, firemen, police officers, people who've been killed in the line of duty. 
be very, very careful. Don't react. Research first. Don't give immediately. Calm down and think it through. Contact your state department to verify that the charity asking you for money is legally registered. Yes, a nonprofit has to be registered and they are given a number. You can also check with the Better Business Bureau, Wise Giving Alliance for information on charities. And if you do become a victim, file a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission the Internet Crime Com Complaint Center or your local police department. Don't let yourself wide open. And that will just conclude this episode of Scam Damn Nation. Stay tuned for next Wednesday when I'll give you some more of my personal journey through hell. And I want you to know every time you report to the police that you've been scammed, you create a record, which means it's kept on file. And if you're not careful enough, they may think you're part of the scam if you give your money so willingly that you don't even check them out. There are safeguards you can take to protect yourself. Protect yourself. Tell them, I'll get back with you. Let me have your phone number. Let me have your email. I can't. I have to answer the door. Make what up any excuse you need. But don't be forced or rushed into giving money that you can ill afford to spend on anybody but yourself. Thank you very much for listening. You can catch this all over again at youtube.com forward slash PW Network and PW talkradio.com on facebook.com forward slash passional world talk radio also on linkedin.com forward slash lillian caldwell and our other 20 social media websites or go to our website passionate world talk radio.com thank you very much for listening and remember Stay tuned for the next installment. Thank you.